Great. Okay. Well, like I said, thank you so much for joining us for another Vicon Powered webinar. We are thrilled today to have the Content Plus team with us, um, hosted by Dr. Kim Duffy, as always, our life science product manager. Um, so they will be covering an introduction to their Templo software and the Content Plus team as a whole. This recording will be sent to your email um, to everyone who registered 24 hours from now. There will also be a YouTube link. And we have over 25 previous webinars on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Vicon, if you'd like to check those out. If anyone would like to participate in an upcoming webinar session, you can always contact me at marketing at vicon.com. And make sure you're following our social channels so you can find out about upcoming sessions and other content that we share from all of our partners. Um, the Q&A section is open, so I'll be reviewing that throughout the presentation. You can drop your questions in and then we will get to those near the end. So with all that being said, I will go ahead and hand it over to Kim. Thank you, Alicia. Hi, everyone. Today is an exciting webinar. We are joined with Quantum Plus, the newest member of the Vicom family, who specialize in video movement analysis. And as Alicia mentioned, this webinar is designed to showcase an insight into Content Plus and their software, Templo Motion Analysis. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce you to our two speakers today. Stefan Kippel, who is the founder and managing director of Content Plus, and Christoph Trotner, who joined Content Plus in 2011, initially as a support engineer, transitioning to product management, and now is the business development manager. Welcome both. And whenever you're ready, Stefan, over to you. Thank you, Kim, for the introduction. Thank you, Elisha, for the other introduction. Welcome, everybody. And first of all, thank you to Kim and Elisha for organizing that, having the chance to speak to all of you, to the Icon audience. Yes, my name is Stefan Kippel. I'm the co-founder of Contemplus, together with uh, Thomas Seeholzer, who is head of development. I myself, I'm responsible for sales and marketing. And um, yeah, some of you may know that in the past, um, Vicon was already um, a shareholder in Contemplus business. So when we started Contemplus back in 2005, and this is what I want to introduce to you a little bit, the history of Contemplus. We founded Contemplus in 2005 um, with the help of Vicon at that point. And the idea was to create a software that is straightforward, that is dedicated to purposes of clinical applications and sports applications. Within these 15 years, or in the meanwhile, almost 17 years, we gained uh, experience globally with uh, a great network with uh, Vicon partners, with other partners, um, such as uh, manufacturers of hardware, which led us to having more than 4,000 customers worldwide. And we are quite proud of uh, being able to show you what our expertise is right now, and maybe one of you may find something interesting. Our team, uh, Contemplas, uh, currently consists of 15 people. As I said, Thomas, uh, who is co-founder, and myself, we are sitting on, on the top. And um, we have a development team of uh, Stefan and Daniel, um, a support team of three people who constantly are providing support to our customers. Uh, solving problems, helping with new ideas. And this is all managed uh, by our back office, uh, um, Katrin and Ulrike, who are yeah, sending the invoices out, uh, taking care of uh, customs and all the things which are necessary. And this is uh, all sold by Franca and Timo, who are part of our sales team, and Eva and Caroline, thanks to them as well, who uh, also helped a lot to make this uh, webinar happen. Uh, last, Christoph, who joined us recently again, and I'm really happy about that because Christoph uh, joined us uh, in 2011, as Kim already said, as a sales engineer. He did a really great job, left us unfortunately for four years, but gained a lot of uh, experience during that time and uh, came back and joined us in January. So I'm really happy that he will now give you the introduction in our Contemplus product portfolio. And uh, thank you for joining. Enjoy it. Christoph, it's your turn now, please. Yeah, hello, everybody. A warm welcome also from my side. I'm more than happy um, to be able to um, present the product portfolio of Contemplus uh, to you today in this webinar. 
So if I would like to sum up uh, what Contemplas provides in a, in a single sentence, I would say Contemplas provides innovative technology for professional video-based motion analysis systems. And this comes along with, I said, yeah, um, two main topics. One of this is that we are a full stack um, software development company, not only taking care about the uh, technological uh, background of the software, but also about the user interface and the analysis protocols, which are tailored to the, to the applications of our customers on the one hand. And also due to our experience that we gained over the last 17 years, as Stefan said, and um, yeah, due to the massive um, yeah, um, yeah, developments in technology, camera technology, but also computer technology, of course, um, we are able to yeah, deliver high quality capture engines um, with um, other hardware along. And this is what um, the next few minutes uh, will be about. Um, it will be a mixture of showing the philosophy of uh, the Templar software platform. Um, we'll give you some insights in, yeah, in, a, in an example of a clinical gate analysis to show you a little more in depth the workflow idea of, of Templar um, in practice. Um, being followed by some other um, applications such as performance analysis and swimming analysis with some uh, yeah, ideas on how we can individualize workflows in our software um, together with um, different hardware setups um, and summing all up uh, at the end. All right. So as you already yeah, heard a lot about, Templo is the core of our software. So this is why it stands in the middle on the top. And uh, this software platform is being there to capture um, yeah, latest state-of-the-art camera technology, not only high-resolution cameras, but also high-speed cameras and multiple cameras at the same time, all um, synchronized at the end of the day. Um, but after the recording, you would like to analyze. And therefore, each and every single um, customer has its own workflow and its own application, of course. So we built some software modules as analysis modules on top of the recordings in order to really streamline the workflows and uh, make yeah, every customer um, able to, um, to follow his, um, his application and his needs, um, be it gate analysis, running analysis, jumping, function movement screening, sprint analysis, swimming, ergonomics, or posture. And as I already mentioned um, earlier, um, all this is also happening in combination with further measurement devices, such as pressure insoles or plates, um, EMG sensors, but also goniometers or accelerometers, um, force plates, or timing uh, measurement devices like OptoJump, OptoGate, or um, really um, competition timing devices. So the basic idea is that Contemplas is being seen as yeah, the recording engine, not only for video footage, but also for um, yeah, analog data or any data that can be um, recorded, synchronized along with the video files in order to make the analysis more easy afterwards or uh, even more helpful um, with uh, additional data. Another ph philosophy of uh, the Templo system is the Templo, as I said, is a basis, but it is built to be scaled, uh, scaled up um, along with your expertise and also with your requirements. So you can easily start with a single camera setup um, at um, another ca uh, camera um, position to this um, setup. You can add, as said earlier, um, the external devices um, and grow with the system, um, add in application intelligence in form of software modules, for example, like uh, gate analysis, if you um, had on, uh, already been using running analysis systems. And of course, can add um, software modules for markerless tracking, um, for example, um, either 2D, which is implemented in Templar already, or 3D with the help of our partner, um, Thea 3D. So when you scale your applications up, you can either scale it up from 2D to 3D, or at the same time, of course, from a more qualitative analysis um, to the quantitative analysis, which is yeah, like the second philosophy of uh, the Templar platform. Yeah, as already mentioned um, uh, from Stefan, the, uh, the very first idea of uh, Contemplas and Templar was to serve both uh, markets, the health market and the sports market. 
So therefore, our application can be divided into those two. Um, of course, there are on, uh, already um, yeah, always uh, gray zones in the in the um, in the middle. But um, yeah, let me start with health. Um, and uh, yeah, here you can see the protocols that are available for the health sector, like clinical gate analysis, running analysis, posture analysis, like uh, 2D and 3D posture analysis, performance analysis, which goes already into the sports market quite a, quite a bit, um, which can also be further divided into jump, balance, and agility testing, and um, functional screening, which also has a bigger impact for um, yeah, return to sports um, screening and yeah, for the sports market. And everything is also um, available, of course, for scientific um, research, um, because always when you um, capture any footage or also uh, measurement devices, all the data can be exported um, to be used with your, with your own scripts in any kind of um, other third party software for scientific research. So with the example of gate analysis, I would like to um, show you a little bit the user interface of uh, Templo and walk you through one of the most dedicated workflows uh, that there is in, in Templo. So on the right hand side, you can um, already see, yeah, the workflow is always you start the recording, you stop the recording. And with um, only a few further steps, you should be able to create a report, um, either as a PDF to be uh, given with the patient or also a digital video uh, report, which can be extracted and further sent and, and being provided for the patient and, and, and others. So what you see on the, on the screenshot is um, one of our dashboards, which in this case shows a two video view from the lateral and the dorsal view. You can um, also see that there is some, um, some angle measurements already um, after a 2D automatic tracking that had been, uh, been performed markerless. And on the right-hand side, you see two diagrams, one for the force plates and the second one is for EMG. Um, and even if you can't read it because it's too small, below that there is uh, the timing parameters that um, have been extracted out of the um, point in time on end gate cycle definition, uh, which can also be seen in the, in the timeline um, at the bottom of the video. So, um, yeah, in just a few seconds, we will start a video that, uh, yeah, sums up this process from the recording over the analysis um, until the report in the dashboard. Um, and I will talk you through the video a little bit so that you get a feeling how um, this is performed in daily practice. So what you see over here is uh, the overview of all existing recordings in this trial. Um, you can see some further information um, about the situation today, um, what, is, uh, what the patient has gone through. So um, this one, which is highlighted at the moment, says uh, that this recording was done one month after surgery. There is another one available for three months, so you can um, easily yeah, compare those recordings. Um, and in the next step, we will create a new analysis. Mm, I'll just drop this. So you can see, can you see the, yeah, I think so. Um, so that you can see the, um, the panel on the right. Oh, excuse me. Huh? Okay, just from the beginning, once again. Okay, this was the list. And at the right hand side, you can now see that there will be, uh, this is just the analysis from before. And now we create a new analysis and we edit this analysis first. So we label it, we say, okay, this is then nine months after surgery. And the next step is the recording. So this is what the recording looks like. Very unspectacular. You can just press start, stop recording and some other tools. Now, after the recording is recorded, then you can click on track. And this uh, step we didn't see, but this takes a few minutes or a few, uh, a little while. And then the automatic markerless tracking has been performed. And this is uh, the dashboard view just after the, uh, the tracking had been performed. So it's, uh, the, the first results are already available. You see some blanks over here. So the gate cycle is not yet there. 
you'll see later on how this will be um, yeah, inserted into the system. But the, um, yeah, some, some angles are already available as well as um, the raw data of the force plate and the EMG. Okay, now we... Um, Yeah, this is a tracking once again. Now here you can see how the points in time for the initial contact on the right foot, um, in, uh, for instance, in this case, are being inserted into the system. And the software automatically asks for the next initial contact on the left. And on the bottom in the timeline, you can easily see the different phases of the gate cycle, which are now inserted in the system and can be seen in table one on the right button. Okay, this dashboard can now be saved. So you just give it a name um, and save this dashboard so that you can easily use this same dashboard later on with another analysis of the same or another patient. Um, and it enables you also to switch between those different dashboards whenever you like, um, which makes also sense um, because sometimes you don't really want to, let's say, stick some EMG sensors um, and therefore you take another dashboard which does not contain EMG data or force plates data. So you can easily adapt the dashboards to your specific needs of the day. Okay, PowerPoint is crashed. This is unfortunate, but we just started up again. <clears throat> um, can we see my screen still? See my video, share my screen again. Can control. I can control. Uh, okay. Okay, so sorry for the technical inconveniences. Um, yeah, um, yeah. what we've just seen was a typical workflow on how to create um, a clinical gate analysis. After the recording, you do some minor steps uh, with the, for example, the tracking, and then you have the data available in the dashboard and you can um, create a PDF or a video report and share this and store it, of course, in the database for further um, comparison with other recordings later on, um, let's say after another uh, month or two. Okay, what we've just seen was a 2D um, yeah, markerless tracking approach. But of course, as I already mentioned, we also have the ability to have a 3D markerless tracking uh, with an export to Thea. So on the left side, um, when you see the recording image, you see that there is a lot um, more camera perspectives than the ones we've seen before. Um, there is a minimum um, setup of six cameras required for markerless 3D tracking. However, um, yeah, depending on the room you want to cover and um, yeah, the analysis you want to perform, um, another camera um, perspective or two might uh, be needed. So um, six is a minimum. After the recording, again, you do then export this um, yeah, data set um, of your six or more views to the third party software of Thea. And in around about three minutes of tracking, um, the data are available in Templo again. And as you can see on the right hand side, um, the um, 
data are available for being reported in Templo reports. So um, it's quite a seamless workflow because you just do the, the export and receive the data back once um, the tracking performance has finished. As earlier mentioned, we can also um, yeah, have further extensions like the pressure distribution plates or insoles. Um, yeah, as you can see for the platforms or also for instrumented prep mills, this is quite a good, um, a good tool to get um, an idea about the pressure distribution um, of, the, of the foot once you land on the, on the um, plate or trap mill. Um, insoles are also available and can be integrated uh, wirelessly with Templo. Um, as seen in the videos before, also the forces um, from yeah, force plates such as Burtek, Kistler, or MTI can be um, yeah, recorded synchronously and being displayed not only as a diagram, but also as a force, lay, a force vector overlay, which um, is pretty helpful um, for different clinical applications, of course. Um, but also in sports, very helpful uh, when you want to optimize um, your movement. EMG sensors, um, yeah, for yeah, obtaining the muscular activity are another add-on, um, as well as uh, the OptoGate data. And as you um, may remember from the video, you've seen that the, um, yeah, the definition of the gate cycle, the points in time for the initial foot contact, for example, if you um, yeah, um, connect the OptoGate uh, right along with the recording, then those um, yeah, definitions are being done automatically because uh, the data are already available from the other system. So this helps to even um, yeah, speed up the workflow again. Okay, now we have a few benefits listed on this slide over here, and those uh, do not only um, apply to, to the clinical gate analysis applications, but also for, um, yeah, to Templo as a whole, I would say. So first of all, um, our goal is always to um, create user-friendly um, yeah, user um, workflows and to support you in effective data acquisition and uh, easy and quick analysis and reporting. Then um, our um, yeah, solutions are not fixed to static solutions, but can also be used mobile. Um, in the field and in certain circumstances, let's say for a two camera setup, even without any external power supply, if you power USB cameras with a notebook, for example. Then the markerless tracking uh, availability that I earlier mentioned um, for 2D and 3D. Multi-device uh, implementation, um, we talked about this. Then the image enhancement that we will see a, a example later on what we can already do or also do after um, a certain recording has been done. Because if you think of, um, let's say, a recording that has been done during a, a sports competition where you don't have any influence on lighting conditions or the position where you can place the cameras, then um, image enhancement tools um, at the end after the recording might make sense um, in order to, yeah, to increase image quality. And of course, also the results that you get out of those images. Extensive reporting, as we already said, um, yeah, it should be easy and quick to create those reportings either as PDFs or videos. Then it's always extendable, um, yeah, not only in the number of cameras and software protocols, but also um, you can start with a basic 2D setup and grow to professional 3D lab setups. And last but not least, Everything or every of our systems can be connected to a server database, um, which might be yeah, a, local, a local server that you host inside your, your business and uh, make available the data internally for, um, yeah, for other colleagues to, to share with you. So let's go away a little more from the gate analysis and um, get over to the performance analysis part. As I uh, um, mentioned earlier already, um, those protocols help uh, us to yeah, not only improve the performance um, in order to uh, yeah, gain strength and, and monitor it, but also to manage injuries um, after, yeah, after injury to monitor um, the rehabilitation and to take a decision when to return to sport and when uh, it's safe enough. 
So the first protocol we want to mention over here is the jumping analysis protocol, um, which offers the, the ability to have an automatic um, yeah, analysis of squat jumps, counter movement jumps, drop jumps, but gives you also an idea about the landing mechanics, um, especially if you take a look at, at the uh, raw data and the automatically created reports. Um, furthermore, you can also see the bilateral asymmetries during the eccentric and contract, uh, concentric phases when uh, having two force plates available for a left and right um, yeah, difference. Next thing is a performance uh, analysis or next thing of performance analysis is the balance um, protocol. So um, also here, but if you have two different force plates available, you can easily monitor and make visible um, yeah, static and dynamic uh, disbalances. Um, so that this is also a system that helps you yeah, to, to work on those um, disbalances and uh, get back to normal and also give a feedback to the athlete um, in life um, about his improvements and uh, yeah, to, to monitor them. The agility um, protocol is another thing, um, yeah, with uh, tapping tests, um, reactivity tests, and frequency measurements um, with the help of the force plates. That is um, also uh, very helpful with the automatic report to monitor the improvements after training and rehabilitation. But again, also here you can go uh, a little more scientific and record with a, with a different camera setup um, of six or more cameras in order to perform a 3D markerless um, yeah, tracking and um, have a scientific, scientific um, yeah, approach analyzing the segments and the, the body points. Now, this was al already something out of the mix zone between health and sports. Um, now I would like to introduce some more um, sports protocols like the sprint start block and the sprint start uh, setup. So in this um, yeah, analysis, we have a, a, a very specific uh, measurement device, which is our own created and developed sprint start block, which is connected to a PC and a three camera system. And along with a, with a start signal given by the computer, um, it is being measured your reaction time, and then, of course, the forces that uh, you apply to the block when you leave the starting block. This is what the typical camera setup or the typical measurement setup looks like um, over here. So you see three different cameras on tripods um, that um, have certain posi positions at the starting line and after, let's say, 10 and 15 meters, I guess. And then um, the notebook, which is also yeah, mobile, of course, um, the cameras are connected to the mobile and the starting block, and then um, the, the start signal is given. After you perform your start, then the, this automatic report is created. And you see um, those six diagrams at the very um, top of the, um, of the notebook, which um, yeah, represent six parameters, which are very valuable for sprint start um, diagnosis and um, they show you exactly how you perform in um, yeah in comparison to the world's best um, always in the range of your personal best um, 100 meter time the spider diagram on the right says um, exactly where you should improve um, yeah, in order to perform better in the starting and uh, to yeah of course improve in the whole 100 meter time. So this is again an, an example of a very, very dedicated workflow um, that is yeah, being tailored to, to one very specific application and helps um, high performance athlete to improve their performance for the sprint. Another thing which is very specific is swimming performance analysis. And this is not only specific because um, it is one specific movement or one specific yeah, sport, but specific because every um, swimming pool is different. So there are ones that are indoor, then there are ones that are outdoors. Some have uh, windows underwater, some don't. So just in case you want to equip a uh, swimming pool, it's very obvious that um, it's a completely new setup each and every time you, uh, you install a system over there. So we have 
already uh, also here very um, yeah, specific workflows and protocols in the software implemented for a simple technique analysis, for start analysis, um, for turn analysis, because those are the standard uh, procedures in swimming, of course, and also a dedicated protocol for race analysis, which can also be used during competitions with a single camera and also videos from extern, uh, external devices can be imported to, um, yeah, to perform those race analysis. Just a few examples of uh, what we did already install in the past. This is, I would say, one of the most, uh, yeah, the most lead or of the worldwide leading swimming centers uh, in Aberdeen Sports Village. This is a, in total 28 uh, camera setup. Um, of course, not um, for every analysis, all the 28 cameras are uh, running at the same time, but uh, sometimes it's only sub setups of those. But here you can also see in the image on the middle that there is an instrument start, instrumented starting block just as the one for the sprint stop. But this is a, a very, uh, a little more difficult one um, with in total four force plates to, um, to yeah, include the kinetic um, parameters of the start um, and also for yeah, left foot, right foot, left hand, right hand. Um, that can then also um, be automatically yeah, analyzed after a start is performed. And then you have very specific camera positions in order to have timing information for 5, 15, 25, and, and so on meters. You have cameras um, above water, cameras below water. Um, so yeah, just to make sure to have really yeah, enough perspectives to um, perform the, the quantitative and the, and the qualitative analysis at the same time with the same set. Another one is one of our um, long-term partners from the Flemish uh, Swimming um, Federation. Um, this is a quite similar, but uh, a similar um, project, but not with uh, this amount of cameras, but in total there uh, are 10 fixed cameras installed above and under water uh, behind portholes. Um, and they do also the start and turn race analysis since a couple of years already. And yeah, this helps them really to yeah, make um, yeah, improvements visible and further improve their, uh, their swimmers um, each and every day during the daily practice. Um, what is yeah, very important here to mention as well is that um, yeah, the monitor that you can see over here um, is there for immediate feedback for the swimmers and the, the um, uh, the system can be operated with a wireless keyboard from the pool deck so that not only a, a dedicated video trainer could um, run the system, but also coaches can use it during daily, daily um, practice. There are, of course, uh, further aquatic sports that can be served with video um, analysis. On the left side, you see a project that we've done in Singapore for the Singapore Sports Hub back in 2014, I guess. Um, with a, a lot of cameras that had not only been installed in the pool for swimming and water polo, but also at the diving tower um, to yeah, analyze um, yeah, the divers. And what you see on the right-hand side is a, a system at the Olympic Training Center in Berlin, where there is a mobile system to, to analyze um, yeah, the divers, um, which has some technical features that we just see in the next slide, um, which is yeah, also again, dedicated workflow towards their daily needs and daily practice because they don't really have the time to always um, start and stop a recording and to make the, the athletes wait for being able to record, but they um, just need to, to train uh, as they do every day and um, have the ability to, um, to see them uh, themselves in the monitor anyway. So as just mentioned, um, what we have developed for those applications is a delayed live view and delayed recording feature. The delay li delayed live view can be seen um, in the left image. So you see um, the big monitor, um, which always plays back the live image, this, which is let's say 20 seconds old. So after a diver performed his jump and um, was able to come back to the pool deck, 
he will see himself just yeah uh, in a rec or being played back um, just uh, when he performed his his dive and therefore he is able to judge whether um, he would like to have this recording available afterwards again or if he does if he wants he just presses uh, the red buzzer and the recording is being stored on the hard disk however the live view is still being available in the system so the next diver can have the same um, the same workflow again when he jumps just a minute after or 30 seconds after this when he decided to take the recording he can go a few steps further to the railing where the, the ipad is mounted and just have the recording available on the um, on the ipad and review it in slow motion and with uh, some other video tools which are available on the iPad, which um, is then of course a second yeah, feedback together with the code, for example, which helps to improve uh, their motion. Another project which uh, yeah, was a little different because it's team sports was a handball, um, handball team in Berlin as well. As well. Um, where we yeah, invented the delayed recording for them. So they have a setup of 10 cameras at the same time running all the time during the complete training of 60 to 90 minutes. And just after a certain action happened, the coach says, okay, I want to have this recorded. So the video coach or the one um, who has the tablet available in his hands just decides then after something took place that this recording should be, um, should be stored and presses a button to record the last 30 or sec uh, 60 seconds. Um, and yeah, in a, in a break, they can just get together at the TV screen, have a review um, about this situation. The coach um, can uh, say what, what was wrong and what could be improved. And just after the break, they um, yeah, have the system ready for the next recordings and start practicing again. So as you see, there is always room for very specific developments and improvements. Um, and yeah, also for team sports, markerless 3D uh, tracking could play a role for further scientific approaches, um, which we can see over here that uh, also two persons in the same image can be tracked quite, quite well. But, and now let's go a little bit to the, to the hardware stuff. Um, scientific precision requires yeah, accuracy, of course. And accuracy, in, when we talk about uh, video um, analysis, accuracy comes along not only with uh, good image quality, but also, of course, um, with uh, synchronization. So we have the different camera technologies for different applications available, starting with, yeah, let's say, mainly consumer electronics like HTV cameras for smaller running analysis setups, um, going further to gig e-vision, USB vision, or even 10 gig E cameras uh, that are available on the market and the latest state of the art, which can be recorded with Templo in a multi um, camera um, setup. So it's not only high resolution or high speed cameras, but also something um, from both worlds at the same time. Like, for instance, a three megapixel camera at 120 frames per second, which is currently state of the art and can be recorded in a multi camera setup. And then uh, talking about software synchronization, um, this comes along with Templo um, already and is uh, synchronized with uh, um, a, an accuracy of uh, one to three milliseconds. And if it need, needs to be even, uh, even more, then we can uh, hardware sync uh, all those cameras with a, with a um, way higher accuracy again. And as also mentioned earlier, there is imaging technology available to um, optimize the images after the recordings under bad conditions. So these are um, yeah, quite new algorithms that we implemented to increase image quality that uh, are either performed on the CPU if a dedicated uh, GPU is not available, but in case it is, um, it's always better to use this because um, yeah, performance is not a problem over there. Um, so we can do brightness adjustments, gamma corrections, contrast and, and white balance correction. And um, just a few minutes before the webinar, I inserted this um, after exporting it from Templo with a, yeah, when I applied those, um, 
those features on the right um, to the image which was terrible on the right um, before, of course. But after uh, applying those um, algorithms, it looks quite nice, I guess. <laughs> At the end, everything that comes along with, uh, yeah, with the analysis protocols, with the camera positions, uh, with big systems, with high-speed cameras, with synch synchronization, um, those are quite complex um, yeah, projects uh, most of the time. And therefore we understand ourselves, not only as developer or software, but also as a company that takes care from the very beginning in consulting and planning, um, later on in implementation, of course, but also then in training, education and instruction, because um, it is very important um, when a system is delivered that it can be used um, yeah, in a, in a good way so that all the features that are implemented can be, can be available and, and used uh, properly by the staff. And then of course, it's all also a matter of professional support uh, to keep the systems up and running and also to get new ideas for new protocols, new applications and new features from the market, from existing customers in order to yeah, also improve from that side and develop further. Last but not least, um, data acquisition and sharing concepts are yeah, gaining importance uh, those days. And I think this slide sums it all up quite well. If you see, uh, if you have a look at the, at the blue part of the, of the slide, you see the recording engine being uh, run on, on a PC. Um, there is multiple cameras connected. Then of course, there are further external devices. But of course, also additional screens and mobile devices or others like we, see, like we saw in the diving application could be something that is needed for a, for a, certain, for a certain customer. And after recording and analysis and the first feedback from a coach, for example, or also a, a physician to, uh, to a patient, um, of course, it's a matter of storing the data and further share the data with other coaches, experts, scientific researchers, and therefore um, data connections and cloud server modules um, will be even more important in the future. And this is what we are looking forward to develop and to, to bring to the market. And this is my last slide. And we're looking forward to the Q&A session. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Christoph. That was a great presentation. And hopefully everyone found out a little bit more about Quantum Plus and then the Templo offerings. If anyone does have any questions, please feel free to post it in the Q&A section. But we do have some questions already, Christoph, if you mind me asking you them. Uh, yeah, of so course. The, the first one is to do with video cameras. Can I use any video camera within the Templar software? Uh, okay, with any video camera. No, not any video camera. Of course, there are certain limitations from a technical point of view, but um, the, the ones that I've just shown, like Gig E-Vision, um, USB 3 Vision and HDB cameras are uh, always good, um, but um, for specific questions, I would uh, I would kindly ask to get in touch with us and and um, individually um, consult. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so the next one, I I think this is actually a fair question. Uh, it's to do with so the three D Markless system. Does it give us hip rotation degree in the gate analysis and other angles? And if Yes, is there any paper comparing it to the analysis system with, uh, with markers? I, I give uh, Christopher rest and answer this question. <laughs> um, basically, um, Thea is providing us with um, the segment rotations um, of the entire body, and this also includes the hip. So uh, from this, uh, we just take what we get as a C3D file and then uh, either in Templo or in Visual 3D, it's possible to do all the rest of the calculations. So we are not adding anything to what is coming from here. 
Uh, it's all purely um, recognized and computed by this program. That's great. Thank you, Stefan. And there is um, comparison papers between Marker and Markless for Thayer. If you look at Thayer Markless, um, that provides all the papers that uh, are available for that. But if you do have any follow-up questions, you can reach out to us on that. Next question um, is to do with integrations. Can I integrate other devices into the template, uh, Tempo software? Yeah, um, there is from, from a group of devices like the ones we mentioned, the pressure distribution, EMG, um, force plates of different vendors, which are the most common ones, I would say. So pressure is Zebris, RS scan, uh, Medilogic, Medilogic. Um, uh, Sensor Medica from Italy is integrated, but still we cannot integrate the whole portfolio of each um, vendor. So we pick the plates which are either uh, provided to us by the manufacturer itself or by the customer. So if customers approach us and say, look, we have purchased the Zebris uh, 1.5 meter plate, then we will tell them, look, we have a very strong integration with Zebris, so no problem, uh, we guess, but still we ask the manufacturer if there's uh, any difference with the, uh, let's say one meter plate we've already integrated. Uh, another example is uh, Medilogy. They have plates and insoles. Sometimes uh, customers are looking for insoles uh, which are integrated. If they are asking for the plate, then we would check this for the customer and give you a feedback. And then most of the time, it's a minor uh, job to, to perform the integration. But it's um, subject to be discussed and uh, agreed with us. And then maybe to add this um, for all other measurement devices that could be connected to a... a, a analog digital converter, for example, yes. then we support national instruments and um, data translation. So this is also no problem to, to add those synchronously to the, to the cameras. That's great. There is a question in the q and I think part of the question is in German, Stefan, first off, if you just mind uh, reading Han's question um, or answering that, please. <laughs> okay, we, we, we can't find this question, uh, but uh, is you, it the... If, yeah, if you just go on the Q&A tab under open, uh, it's the, uh, the one at the bottom. We only have three. Uh, this one. Okay. Okay, it was auto correct. Okay. <laughs> I'll ask another one while we're waiting for them to. Yeah, I think you, you type again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, is is it possible to use the template software outdoors? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We we have many installations. Uh, with the Olympic training centers, I think this is a good example where people want to do either rowing or uh, javelin. So all the uh, track and field applications are most of the times outdoors. And uh, sometimes we want to uh, have the opportunity to have a, a standardized um, analysis setup, which is most of the time indoors, but then they go to competitions, they go to training camps, they would like to take the systems with them. So that what uh, Christopher already mentioned was the uh, ability of uh, the sprint start system with the four camera system. So that's a a quite uh, standard uh, package we sell. Uh, it all comes with a notebook powered by the notebook with USB 3 cameras. So let's say three megapixels, um, 120 frames per second is a, a common resolution and uh, frame rate, but the cameras uh, will allow for higher frame rates as well if you reduce area of interest. So at the end of the day, uh, this is a, a quite hybrid system in terms of being used in a um, way of delayed video feedback, but also high-speed applications uh, such as golf analysis, if you want to see the impact, uh, things like that. So yes, of course, it's mobile and indoors and outdoors uh, availability. That's great. And roughly how quick is the setup time? Well, the, the, <laughs> that of course depends on the number of cameras and what you want to do. If it's just a uh, one camera setup with playback, uh, then I would say it's a, it's a five minutes job you have uh, to perform. If it's a 3D 
uh, setup which you've also sold for out those applications, then you have to set up eight cameras to do the calibration. I would think about one hour of uh, setting it up properly with all the testing, uh, being able to really um, get uh, accurate results. At you. So yeah, it, it really depends. But um, as I said, we are focused on providing solutions that are straightforward and easy to use. And if it takes too long, people will not use it. So the focus is always on having an easy setup and easy, uh, straightforward um, software package. That's great. Um, just a couple more questions. Uh, what, will follow, uh, what will follow the updates bring for FlexRec? Markless measurements in parallel with video? This is from Hans Peter. Hans Peter, customer, welcome uh, to the section. Um, you are talking about the new version uh, 22, I guess. Um, so we have both the uh, markerless tracking 2D and 3D. Um, the 3D tracking, which is a generic uh, package, can track any movement. That's why it's part of the FlexiRec uh, package anyways. The 2D um, markerless tracking was trained as an uh, artificial neural network for jumping, running, and clinical um, gait. So that's why it does not really make sense to have this um, being integrated in the FlexiRec. So uh, the, the biggest um, advantage you would gain from is buying a 3D uh, uh, tracking from us, uh, because then you could do all the, the movements you're looking at. Could be gait, could, uh, but also be uh, any movement or function screening or any sports performance movement you're thinking of. That's great. Um, there is a couple of technical questions, but they're asking for a contact information. So uh, is there a particular email uh, people should contact you to get more information or um, ask technical questions too? Yeah, of course. Um, please uh, reach out to um, either uh, or to, to info. Uh, I, <laughs> I am fo at contemplas.com. Um, with your with your technical question, we we will follow up, um, or just go to our website contemplas.com and and leave a a message um, in the contact section. Yeah, that's great. Thank you both. All right, that was a great session. Thank you guys for joining us. Like I said, the recording will come to all registered emails in the next day, and you can reach out to us. Info at Contemplast, info at Bicon, contact us on our social channels if you have any other questions. Um, and with that being said, I think we're done for the day. Thank you. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Goodbye. Thank you for joining.